Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Open your heart and mind as God's word comes to you today. Introducing Pastor David Fadi. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. The first thing the Word of God shows us is who we are. Then it shows us who we are meant to be. Now the Word. Hallelujah. Put us hands together for Jesus this morning. Celebrate Jesus. Let me just be grateful and say, Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for another day to be in the land of the living. Thank you for another day to gather with other believers. Thank you for another day to receive from you. For the Bible says, He daily loads us with His benefit. He daily loads us with His benefit. Give Him praise this morning. Give Him glory. Give Him glory. Father, we bless your name. Father, we bless your name. Lord Jesus, we have gathered again today in your name, at your feet. We pray that your abiding presence that is with us will reach out to us and bless us this morning in the name of Jesus. That no one will leave this place the same way they came. There shall be great transformation. There shall be renewal. We'll experience your freedom again in this place. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I didn't hear your amen. You're welcome. Please have your seat again this morning. We are glad to have you in church. We are glad to have you around this morning. Despite the rain, uh, started raining Sunday rains are always very deceptive because somewhere in our subconscious, Sunday is meant for rest. So imagine that you now wake up with very cool weather. Your body wants to be on the bed. But thank you for finding time to be here this morning. Uh, we are in a month of freedom and God's been speaking to us severally. Uh, last Sunday we considered freedom from the past. And I want to encourage you, these messages, you ought to listen to them and listen to them again, that you may be able to serve all that is there. Not just listen to them, those scriptures, the word of God, meditate on them, that you may be what that word is telling us. And during the week on Thursday, we looked at the Passover, which is God's way or God's system of using the blood for our deliverance, how God orchestrated the use of the blood of Jesus. And the Bible said that there are three things that bear witness on the earth, the blood, the water, which is the word of God, and the Holy Spirit. And so the blood of Jesus is God's instrument of delivering us and guaranteeing us freedom. And we studied extensively on the Passover, and how Jesus is our Passover. And therefore, if you are going to experience freedom, it has to be through Jesus. We also emphasize that when we talk about the blood of Jesus, it's not necessarily the red blood cells and the white blood cells and the plasma and the platelets in the body of Jesus. Obviously, those things are not there. Again, where Jesus was buried, if you go there, you may not see any traces of such things. When we talk about the blood of Jesus, it's actually talking about the sufferings of Christ. Everything that Jesus went through in suffering, in his death, in his burial, and his resurrection. All of this is captured any time we talk about the blood of Jesus. We also understood that using the blood of Jesus is not necessarily by shouting the blood of Jesus. Or by saying I cover myself. If you look at the epistle, you look at the apostles, I'm not sure you will find a place where they covered themselves with the blood of Jesus, where they shouted the blood of Jesus. We have been used to that, no problem. But there is, a, there is an understanding we must have. And we saw that in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by what? 
the word of their testimony. So the way to use the blood of Jesus is to use your mouth to alter the things that the blood of Jesus did for you. By his stripes, I am healed. That is how to use the blood of Jesus. Not by just saying, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. Putting in your mouth the offerances, the declaration of the things that the blood of Jesus had done for you. And I believe that by the time we come on Thursday, I will have been able to put up quite a number of them that will be useful for you in your personal walk with God. So this morning... I want to share what God laid in my spirit during the week. It's almost something close to what we discussed last week, which is talking about uh, uh, dealing with the past. But it's a little step away from that. We're going to be looking at overcoming the grip of fear. Overcoming the grip of fear. And uh, God was opening my eyes to understand that many people really have been bound by the spirit of fear. You know, the only lady that came to give testimony this morning was talking about the fact that she wanted to launch a brand, launch a business, and somehow she was scared, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and uh, that held her back for quite a while. Now, in launching now, she could see how she's meeting the need of people and how people are, if she did not overcome that fear, she would not have become a blessing in the way she had become a blessing. She will not also be blessed in the way she's been blessed. So, most of the time, fear is another equipment or tool used by the devil to hold God's people in bondage and captivity. And this morning, God wants to see how as believers, we can overcome the grip of fear over our life. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 8. And verse number 15, Romans chapter 8 and uh, verse number 15. The Bible says there that you have not received, please note those words, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Second Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1. I would like us to start from verse 1, even though my emphasis is verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 1, we'll start from verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, Timothy is a young pastor, very young pastor, pastoring a quite big church, a church of different age groups. The elders are there, the younger ones are there. So Timothy is Paul's protege. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee be mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy When I call to remembrance, take note, the unveiled faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Louise and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance. Like I have always said, that most of the time, bondage is actually most of the time out of, it it stems out of ignorance. And one of the ways God deals with bondage, deals with the oppression of the devil upon our life, is to make us know, is by knowledge. So it says, I called, but I called to remembrance the unveiled faith, look at verse 6. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance, that you stir up the gift of God, 
which is in thee by putting on of my hands. So when I lay my hands on you, you received an impartation. It is still in you. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of what? A sound mind. Verse 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Let me stop there. Uh, Paul was admonishing his son, Timothy, and one thing that he was telling him was not to allow fear to have a hold on him in so much that it will limit him from actualizing the plan and purpose of God upon his life. Timothy was pastor in a quite large church, like I said, and he's a young pastor. And if you look at the first Timothy that he wrote to him, he told him, let no man despise thy youth. Because it is possible, because these people are older than you, wealthier than you, you may begin to have a little bit of fear in you. You may hold back. You may not be able to launch out as you expect to launch out. And Paul was trying to tell him, you have not received. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. What does fear do to people? Number one, fear has torment. Fear torments people. It inflicts pain on people. It torments people. First John chapter 4 and verse 18. You should not allow fear to fear. Bible says fear has torment. First John chapter 4 and verse number 18. Leave it to me quickly, please. First John chapter 4. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear. Because fear has torment. And like, if you want to look at it critically, you would always know that fear, most of the time, is always more, most of the time, a response to something that happened before. Hello? Let me give you an instance. A young boy, a small boy that is just crawling, sees a snake moving. The boy is going to pick the snake. If care is not taken, put it in his mouth. Hello? He does not know. He does not have knowledge about what snake can do, how, how, how deadly snake could be. He has not been beaten before. He has not seen it anywhere before. He has not watched it anywhere before. Nobody has told him that story before. But as the child begins to grow, he begins to listen to what people say, oh, I had snake bite the other time. This person died of snake bite. This happened. He watch online. He watch everywhere on TV. I have a knowledge now that snake is what? Poisonous. So the next time you see the boy with a snake, the snake that he will have jumped and picked and play with, the guy is now terrified. The child can even begin to scream in the room. And everybody's wondering what happened. Why? The guy is now not just responding to the snake. He's responding to both the knowledge, the information, and the experience he has gathered about snake. So most of the time, fear is also part of the things that the devil used from our past. When you have experienced something negative before. Look at the testimony of that young guy. If God was pointed at him, and for two months or more, he was scared to even go out. A young lady, one of our members in Abuja was kidnapped and he was, she was released that same day. But up till now, she still gripped with, if somebody just said anything, if there is a stern voice around her, she turns and she's, she's still fearful like somebody wants to kidnap her. Now that fear is there. It came because of what had already happened in the past. So fear has torment. I think I've told you the testimony before. It's not a testimony anyway. A story before. And I was up, up, up in my house. I was alone. And that night, I was hearing movement on the staircase. And it was around 11 o'clock. And I felt that people were climbing my stairs. And I was there. I went to carry cutlass. 
I was watching through the window to see who I didn't want anybody to just badge on me. I want to be aware where you knock the door because I was thinking people. In fact, I sent message to my neighbor, someone, people are on my staircase, moving up and down. I couldn't sleep till about 4 a.m. I, I was with my cutlass by my side. Only for me to wake up and discover that they were rats. They were rats. Running out of skelter. They were rats. No, no human being was in my compound. If I remember where my neighbor just moved in, there were still some squirrels that used to walk in the roof because we stay up so we are close. We are with the roof there. The following morning, the man came and told me, did I hear people calling in our roof? I said, nobody calling in our roof. They are squirrels or, 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 or birds. The man, could, the, man, in fact, the man called his police friend. But the question I asked the man is that how on earth will a thief wants to rob and we live in a two-story building that's three floors the thief will now get up to the roof. How? What happened to the ground floor? Fear will torment you. You, not even, you will lack common sense when fear grips you. Fear has torment. Some people are tormented. They are in bondage. They are in pain. Serious one. They can't go out. They can't come in. They can't live freely. They can't even be joyful. Fear has torment. Fear of unknown, fear of death, fear of what will happen, fear of what happened before, let it not repeat itself, fear of what somebody told me, let it not happen to me. Fear as torment. Number two, fear is fueled and sponsored by demonic spirits. Fear is what? Fueled and sponsored by demonic spirit. Go back to that Romans chapter 8. Let's just keep those two scriptures close by Romans 8, 15 and that's 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Romans 8, 15 says, For you have not received the Spirit. So it is a, there is a Spirit behind it. It is a demonic Spirit behind it. He said, You have not received and in 2 Timothy 1, 7, he said, God has not given you because spirit comes from God or from the devil. Once it is spirit, is it that it's from God or what? Or from the devil. So if the spirit of fear is not from God, then it is where? It is from the devil. So we must know that. So when you are afraid... When you are necessarily under the bondage of fear, you should know it is a spiritual warfare. It is a spiritual thing. So I was telling that young lady the other time, I said, see this thing that happened to you, I told her things to do to come out of it. Because the devil can use it the day you are supposed to go and see the person from where you will get the contract that will give you the breakthrough you are looking for. Or there is an assignment God has placed upon your life. There is a particular destiny God wants you to reach out to. You can be locked up in the house and be afraid of stepping out that day. Because of fear of being kidnapped. And that is a day of destiny. That is a day that God is going to use you to touch somebody's life. That is where God wants to transform a particular life. And you will be there inside and say, I cannot go out. Oh, it's already 7 o'clock. It's already 7 o'clock. The problem is not 7 o'clock. The problem is that you have been gripped by the spirit of fear. Number three. Fear puts people in bondage. It binds people. It puts people in bondage. That they cannot live their full potential. It places a limit on their life. See, someone said, if, that there is a book, a person called the book, Out of the Box Parenting, by Chris Forward. Very fantastic book. And one man was saying, I think it was the same man I was saying, and he said, if people like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and many of those people were raised by some African parents, they will never become what they became. It was to, in fact, they were actually discussing about African parenting. That how many really globally great people have been raised from African parenting system? I mean, I've said it here several before. When our parents were younger, 
some of them lived in correct but then one extreme village and they told themselves i want to go to school i want to be educated they managed the road jam and those days there was no you know you there was unilag there was unical there was unn there was abu zaria there was ui uniben look at the schools then and the the boy will leave the worst that would happen, the best that would happen, they will follow the boy to the park and off to Lagos. The father and mother had not been there before. The child himself had not been there before. And they go. In some instances, the next time they are seeing that boy is after graduation. Five years after but they allowed the boy to go. Listen. Was there no fear of unknown? Traveling now. No matter what anybody wants to tell me. Traveling now. This age. Is far better. Than traveling then. And I will explain. You may say well. They will not kidnap. People were still dying on the road that time. That's one. Number two. Traveling now, your father and mother can be calling you every five, five minutes to know where you are. Secondly, you can share your Google location with them. And they are tracking you everywhere. You, that time, they don't even know you have arrived until five years after. When you return. No communication, no phone call. No letter. I told you my cousin went to serve in Zafara. We wrote her a letter. No, she wrote us a letter to tell us that she has arrived. The letter got to us after she had come back. Not after the end of uh, one year. She came back, I think, six months into our youth service just to come back, then go, went back again. It, she, after that coming back, that was when we saw the letter that she has arrived the first journey. But they allow those children to go. That's why those people became professors today. That's why those, those young boys of those days became what they became today. Because even though there were things to be afraid of, the parents looked beyond those things and allowed those children to fulfill their potential. I tell people, most of the time, overprotective parenting is the reason why children will not be successful. Is the primary reason. Watch them. Because see, to be successful, there are levels of risk that must be taken. But see, your parents love you. Your uncle love you. In fact, your brothers, they love you so much that they can be the reason why you are not successful. Is their love. Their love for you. I mean, their love for you is the reason why you can be successful in some instances. So this fear can place limits on how far somebody can go in life. It can place it there. Imagine that you told your mother or father that you wanted to be a pilot. They are thinking that you want to die. You told your father or mother that you want to join the military. They are thinking you want to die. But if you don't join the military... That family can never have a general. Hello. Because that is the way to become what? A general. But your parents are afraid that you will die. But your parents have seen thousands of soldiers who never died. Have you, who never died in battle? Have you not seen? A lot of them retire. They almost, in fact, the people that are alive, that are retired, are one of the people that die in battle. But you focus on the people that die. Once you hear a news that ah, they've killed three soldiers, three out of 300 on that battlefront. Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? You cannot be, I cannot be in this house. I'm happy to beat it. For everything you want to do, they can, people will give you reasons why the danger. Eh? Is it that we should not consider those things? We should consider them. But don't allow fear to limit your life. Joshua was about to enter into the fullness of his life. 
He was to lead the people of Israel from where Moses stopped. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. See, I discovered that most of the time where the Bible is telling somebody, fear not, is because there is something great to come into, but if you are not careful, fear will stop you from getting into it. That there is something great that you're supposed to get into. Joshua 1 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. I don't want to read from the beginning. He told him, Joshua, Joshua, arise. Don't be afraid. Don't, in fact, they said that there are 365 fear not in the Bible. One for each day. Because there is enough to be afraid of. The Bible says, and a lazy man sits in the house. I say, ah, lion is in the streets. I cannot go. It's in the book of Proverbs. Lion is in the streets. The reason why many of you came late this morning is because rain is falling. And I looked at everybody. Nobody is salt. It is anybody now that has what I taught you. You have disintegrated. You have dissolved. And it's raining. Oh. It's raining. Oh. It's cold. Oh. Have you seen? When, when, I, when we say in Nigeria that it's cold, I laugh. The weather is cold. You haven't seen cold. Have you seen Canada? You know what is in Canada. That when you wake up in the morning, snow has blocked your door. This, you have to look for shovel to remove snow from your car. To even as it to be cold is normal. Oh, we say it rained, it rained, it rained, it rained. Some people now, water has reached the roof of their house in this same country, and they are still living. They will still put. They are, they are, they are firewood and whatever inside Keno and be celebrated in Akara inside Keno because the only way to reach the next person is on water. But they will not say, Oh, it rained because see, there is enough reasons to be afraid. Joshua had enough reasons. Joshua said, Hey, God, is Moses you called? Do you know how stubborn these human beings were in the days of Moses? Now, in fact, if you want to say it, it's them that killed Moses. If you want to say it the same, we want to say it well. They are the reason why Moses did not reach the promised land. God, this is ascending me. He was dragging his foot. He was God had to tell him, Moses, my servant is dead. You know, he's trying to mourn the death of the, of, G, of Moses more than God who took Moses. So God had to tell him, I know, I know, Moses have died. Stand up, arise. He was still dragging his feet. He said, No, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Paul told Timothy, I know what God put in you when I lay my hands on you. But the way you are behaving, you will not achieve it. I know the capacity that God has put in you is 100 megawatts. But you are doing one watt. You are just, just, just maintaining, you are maintaining cool and calm. You are just doing it slow, slow. They say, no, 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 no. What is in you when I lay my hands on you? It's great. Stir it up. Do not entertain this. You have not received the spirit of bondage to fear. God did not give you the spirit of fear. So let's see in God how God will position you or how you can connect with God to be able to overcome the grip of fear. Let's go back to that second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Let's start from verse um, start from verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unveiled faith that is in thee which dwell first in thy mother Louise and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that that same faith is in you. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance, 
that you stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. The first thing that helps you to overcome fear is the perfect understanding of what you have. What did I say? What you have. I used to ask myself a very interesting question. Why is it that the bad guys, the thief, the kidnapper, the bandit, the cultist, they walk at night with confidence? Hello? But you, a child of God, You walk at night with fear and trembling. Darkness is the same. Do you get the point? 8 p.m. is 8 p.m. 9 p.m. is 9 p.m. How come day, it is that by 11 to 12, they will come out of their house with confidence, expecting nothing evil to happen to them? Hello? But you, if you dare come out by 10, you are looking left, right, left, right, left. They are just going. What makes the difference? Why is it that when there is evil around, trouble around, we call the police? Let me know you say that, police. We, if we see soldier, we call them. Say, come to my rescue. What makes the difference is that the, the military guy has a rifle. Two, he has a training. Even if they give you rifle, you don't have a train. If they train you, you don't have a rifle. What those people have is what is making them overcome fear. What they carry, what they possess, what they know they carry. That cultist guy had been through things. They've beaten him. They've put incision on him. He has drank blood. He knows somewhere in him he has some level of power. He knows. But right in you is the spirit of the living God. The fullness of the power of God. The power, the Bible makes us understand that the power that raised Jesus from the dead Is the greatest expression of power on the face of the earth. That power is in you. But you are afraid. That's why Paul told Timothy, your problem is not what you don't have. Your problem is not knowing what you have. Not staring it up. So I remember the days when we were in school. When we pray like this and we finish praying in tongues, we pray, we pray, we charge spiritually. We are even going out, we finish praying by 12, 1 to 2. We are going home with the expectation that the devil will come and just chance us. Let's just meet him. Let's have a word. Let's have a conversation. There is a level of awareness of the supernatural power of God on your inside. That gives you confidence to move ahead. Even though you are walking in the valley of the shadow of death. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. These are scriptures that you're supposed to have on your fingertips. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. You are of God, little children. Say, Pastor, I'm just young. I'm just young. I'm, 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 I'm still young in faith. You have God, little children. And you have overcome them. How? Because greater is he that is in thee than he that is in the world. The reason why you are afraid is because you estimate what is on the outside stronger and more powerful than what is within Many of us, see, I'm telling you, a lot of work needs to be done. Many of us does not know 
what exactly it is that you are a child of God. Many of us does not know what exactly the value that it brings that I have the spirit of God. If a man goes to the Babalao, goes to a, charm, a, a fetish man, a juju priest, and they roll something in him, for him, and they told him to swallow it, that this thing you are swallowing is bulletproof. It will not make bullets to touch you. That guy swallows it. And he's hearing that guy is gunshot. He confronts it. In fact, that day after they give him nothing to swallow, he will tell the Babala, was try it on me. How did they give him now? And he said, let them try it now. Listen, you know, if they shoot him and that thing is not it, he's going to die. But he said, shoot me. Something they gave him. But we will receive the Holy Spirit. And the kind of tongues you speak at night. Just by virtue of cockroach. Even the Holy Spirit in you. Is questioning you. What should not even make you shiver at all. You are already. See. If an unbeliever and a believer is in the same place. Who should be more solidly courageous? A believer. No matter what they carry, what you carry is stronger than what they carry. If everybody is apprehensive, if everybody is under anxiety, everybody is running the task it is the child of God there that should give every other person confidence. Paul was in a shipwreck. Everybody was afraid of death. Paul said, nobody in this place will die. I know. Let's not imagine that is poor. Hey, my wife. Ha. Hey, what will I? I did not tell her that I'm traveling. Ha. I did not. Hey, let's see, his poor is not doing that. What we happen to other people? They are now encouraging Paul and say, hey, "Man of God, man of God, see, take it easy. God is on the truth." That's what it does. Don't be laughing, no. That's how many of us are. It is unbelievers that are comforting us. They are encouraging us to be strong and be of good courage. Unbelievers. He said, take it calm. It is not right. You don't understand what is on your inside. It is the presence of the Spirit of God that gives us confidence, boldness, that does not make us fearful. Once you are exhibiting fear, it is a proof you are no longer conscious of the presence of the Spirit of God. You are no longer conscious of the power of God that is on your inside. There is nothing else. So what do you do? You retreat to get yourself steered up to be conscious. That's why I say, steer up what is in you. You have to steer it up. So that it comes to full understanding, full consciousness, full awareness of the extent. I remember when my pastor in school that time, on a Sunday service that he went to church, before he came back, they robbed his house. So he got a security guy and he bought a gun. So the day I went to his house, he called me to his room. He gave me, he said, see this thing. If anybody does pimp there, high fire. He said, this gun you are seeing, two, we come out. Two bullets at a go. He put it there. He sleeps with his two eyes closed. One, he has somebody outside. If that one is overpowered, he has another. Then one night, he was still watching NTA news. He gave the gun to the security man. He now went out there to go and check the man. You know, when they do NTA news now, uh, at 9 o'clock, the man was fast asleep. You know, some is a, he's another thing to be asleep. He's another thing to be fast asleep. <laughs> so the man went out and removed the rifle from the man's hand. And the man was still fast asleep. Well, he allowed him to stay till the following morning. He sacked him that morning. He now bought two dogs. Just two. With his gun in his house. He knows based on what he has that even you, the devil, the, the thief that want to cross his fence, you must be afraid. He has shifted the fear from him. Before you knock the gate, he has moved the fear from him to you. The day you are aware of what you carry, 
you will just see. See, when there, there is a church that used to do this program, power must change hands. It's not really that power is changing hands like that. People are just more aware of the power they had. So you have now moved the fear from you to the devil. It happened to Gideon. They wanted to fight. But they were afraid of the enemy. So one of the days they were just going and they stumbled on the enemy's camp. And in the midst of the enemy, somebody was sharing a dream. And the person said, ah, last night I had a dream. And a loaf of bread landed in our midst and destroyed everybody. Ah, they told him the meaning of that dream is that loaf of bread is Gideon. Once Gideon landed in our midst, that would be all. Now, Gideon was afraid. But those people were more afraid. So, receiving that information made Gideon to now be more courageous. What has he done? He has transferred the fear to his enemy's camp. Based on awareness of who we are, what you have. Number two, that gives you boldness to overcome fear is who you are. And really, who you are always affects what you have. Hello? You didn't hear what I just said? Who you are will always determine what you have. If you are a soldier, you will have a gun. If you are a governor, I can't remember now, the number of security men that are assigned to you. You have DSS, you will have military people, you will have police. In fact, now they will probably give you civil defense too. They will give you all. They will give you all. If you not even like, you can use your money to go and recruit some other one for yourself. Based on who you are. If you move from being a governor to become a president, what you have will also increase. If I want to become the president, the entire armed forces of the country, the entire resources of the country is to protect you. I hope you know how much it costs for the president of the United States to just fly from New York to even Washington, inside US. How much more that Donald Trump, sorry, What's his name now? Joe, Joe Biden is flying from US and is going to even London. You saw during the burial of the Queen, everybody enter bus. All the president of the country that went for that burial, they put all of them inside Bonlue, inside bus. He did not enter bus. He, they still drove him in his car because. The entire wealth of America is to protect him. Whatever it will cost. That the Air Force One, if he's inside, before he will die, if he will die inside the Air Force, a lot of things have died. The, the, the aid that is behind the man, that is behind the governor, behind the president, there is no reason on earth you should be alive when that man has died. You are standing behind him, somebody sh- shot. And he died, you are alive. You will have that at the end. What explanation? You should die. He lives. That's it. That's, that's what they have based on who they have become. You know who you are. Do you know? You are a child of God. Did you hear me? You don't know. You are what? A child of God. The entire resources of heaven is deployed to protect you. You are a child of God. Go back to that scripture. Let's start from verse 5, 2 Timothy chapter 1. I call to put the remembrance of you, the unveiled faith that is in you, that dwells first in your mother. I put the remembrance, verse 6, the gift of God that is in you by putting on of hands of what? Of the presbytery. Go back to Romans chapter 15. So Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of what? Adoption. 
to cry what? Abba, Father. The word Abba, Father is like saying Daddy, Daddy. That's what it means. So you are a child of God. It means a lot. See, many believers don't know the value of this thing. That's why you hear a believer say, as a Christian, can I marry a Muslim? You don't know who you are. It's like a lion going for marriage counseling and asking the mark pastor, sir, as I'm a lion like this, can I marry a rat? Why do you ask that question? You only ask that question because you don't know who you are. That's the only way. Even ego, ego cannot come down and say, oh, Pastor, as an ego that I am, can I marry a chicken? Ego cannot try it. Cannot try it. The chicken may be wanting to marry him or, or marry her. The desire may be from the chicken, but desire can never be from the ego. The day the ego starts desiring to come and be dating and marrying a chicken, just know he has lost his ego ship. He or she, it or it, is no longer an ego. Not even an eaglet. Is now something else. You are a child of God. Let it sing. Greater is he that is you than, than, that is in the world. Let it sing. The resources of heaven is deployed. You are God's child. Even the, our president, his son was involved in keke acid. He was just doing bike. Bike he was just having fun. He broke his leg. They used the resources of our country to send him abroad for treatment. That one did not pay me. When he came back, after, you know what it means? You were playing football, you broke your leg. That's the meaning. You, you were just playing. When he came back, he was the minister of state for health that went to receive him at the airport. So after you broke your leg, your father managed to send you to hospital. Then, the CMD of the hospital is the one that came to receive you back to your father's house. That it is. But that was the child of the president of the country enjoyed being a child. Tell me, if that guy is going anywhere, he cannot be afraid. In this country, hey, Boko Haram is bombing, Boko Haram is, he will go there. He is not afraid of anything. He is aware of the security that is deployed for every of his moves because of who he is. But let them enjoy it now. Because you cannot always be a president child forever. But you can always be a child of God forever. You cannot always be a governor's son forever. Eight years, mass. You are not the son of the former governor. That's all. You cannot be a child of a former God. And neither should you become a former child of God. You cannot become a child of a former God. And God used to be God when I was his child. He's no longer God. That's why I'm going through what I'm going through. Yes, you choose to become a former child of God. But that should, that should not happen. Who you are, you are a child of God. Let me give you one more. Where you are. Somebody say, where, I am. where you are. Where you are. For instance, if you travel by road, hello, if you travel by road, you can be scared of what? Road accident plus kidnapping. If you travel by air, you can be scared of flight accident. But you shouldn't really be afraid of kidnapping based on where you are. You cannot be in Aso Rock and be afraid of kidnapping. Hello? You cannot be inside Air Force One and be afraid of kidnapping. Inside Air Force One. Where you are actually tells what you should be afraid of. Where you are. For instance, you are in Uyo. They said there is flood in Lokoja. Will you be afraid? Will you be afraid? You are in Lagos. They said they bombed a the, the market in Kaduna. Will you be afraid? Where you are 
should determine what you are afraid of. I show you. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. In case you didn't know where you are. Ephesians 2, 6. Uh, let's start from verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, he quickened us together with Christ, for by grace we are saved, verse 6. He did not just quicken us. Quicken us means to raise us. What did he do? He raised us up together and made us sit together in where? Heavenly places in Christ. So, you were coming back from school yesterday. You passed in front of a guy's house and the guy came out and challenged you. He's, uh, he's a bully. You ran. He chased you. You ran. You almost died. You got home. Your father is a major general. So the following day, you were walking with your father. And your father was holding your hand. What will you do when you get to the door of the house where you were challenged yesterday? You will wait and knock the door and ask to see the guy. What is changing? Where you are? You are with your father. You are with your father. If you are above, nothing beneath should bother you. If you are beneath, you should be afraid of everything here. But he said he has raised up up, and we are seated together with him in heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers. That is how I you are seated with him. This which means what Jesus is not afraid of, you shouldn't be afraid of. Listen to this. All of these things may excite you in this service. But what will make this thing work in your life is if you continue to meditate on it. Until it becomes your reality. Until you know I am seated with Christ. I used to have, we used to have a pastor in our church. He said he used to have a dream. And in that dream, a masquerade always chases him. A masquerade. He will run and run and even wake up tired. He's a pastor. So one day, he had this kind of conversation. And he started thinking about it. He gave it enough thought that he left his conscious mind and he moved to his subconscious mind. Because most of what plays out in your dream are remnant of your subconscious. So he, he, he dwelt so much on it. He slept that night like normal. The masquerade came as normal. He started running as normal. But in the midst of his running, he just suddenly remembered that he shouldn't be running. That that thing is supposed to be the one running. He turned. Know that if you are chasing somebody and you are a person that has been running and running, the person suddenly stopped and turned back, you will stop. <laughs> you will stop because you know the game is changing. The guy turned without saying anything. The masquerade started running. That was the end. Consciousness, awareness. Paul said, I put you in remembrance. You must continually put yourself. See, let me show you, let me, let me show you the practical of it. Now, you are going to go for an interview. And you heard, and people are beating for that thing. They are coming all the way from France. Somebody is coming from Japan. You are coming from you. Know you. you have every reason to be afraid because there are giants in the land. You have everything, reason to be afraid. But why was Joshua and Caleb not afraid? Why was David not afraid of Goliath? Because other people were confronting Goliath as an army of themselves. 
No, David saw Goliath and he saw themselves as the army of the living God. He changed the game. So you are going there. You are, you are preparing in the morning. Your heart is beating fast. What should you do? Lock yourself in your room. And begin to raise all of this. Who am I in Christ Jesus? I have the spirit of God in me. While I am in front of them, what I say is what they desire. So before you left your home, you have already, by steering up what is inside of you, you have put yourself in an advantaged position. You see yourself winning that thing. So when you get there, you are not jittery. You are not jittery at all. There is confidence. See, let me tell you, confidence is also capital. There is how you are talking about what you are talking about. We know you don't have to. You have no confidence. We have seen people who did defense. And on the day of defense, they were confidently stupid. What they were saying does not make sense. But the confidence they have endears the examiner to them. And they are just, they are just, they are just admiring the person's folly. They just admire and say, wow. That confidence alone will score you points. They will deal with you, they will talk, but you are likely not going to lose. Because of what? Confidence. Fear will always, will always deprive you. Everywhere you are going, before you leave your house in the morning, steer it up. Before you leave every day, steer it up. So you are confronting life, not with fear, but with confidence. Move the fear from your own doorstep to the enemy's gates. That what you are afraid of should now be afraid of you. When I was going to write my second jam, the first jam I wrote, I wrote it in fear because jam, you know, almighty jam, almighty jam, jam, jam. By the time I was going to write my second jam, in fact, I told myself that morning that if I had passed jam the first time, it would have been a mistake on the part of jam. Because I now know what I didn't know. I now know the code of jam. I went into that hall. I had a severe headache that day. But I went in with confidence that based on the level of understanding I have of navigating this thing, that may be carnal because I'm, I'm depending on my flesh. But in this regard, you are not depending on yourself. See, strip a military man of the straining he has, of the artillery that is in his hand, is the same thing with you. What you are scared of, you will be scared of. Why is it that when you run, him, you confront? They say, Book Quran is somewhere. Everybody is retreating. There they are going. It's because of the training they have and they know it. And you know what they do in the military? They don't just train you 35 years, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and leave you there. No. Every now and then, they keep you in remembrance. Even when there is no word, they go for shooting. Don't be shooting. Don't be shooting. Be shooting. So that the shooting is in you. Every morning they wake up, they do their drill. So that they are fit every day. Refresher courses. Everything just to make sure that you are even though there is no battle yet. But you are behaving every day as if you are in battle. If these people are doing that, you should always put yourself in remembrance. You should always tear up. There is a reason why you will need to be afraid. But there is enough reason why you should not be afraid. Stand to your feet. Let us pray. I want you to begin to deal with specific areas of your life where you know fear had been tormenting you. Deal with specific areas of your life where you know fear had not allowed you to make the move you are supposed to make. Some of you, God will give you a bright idea. The resources is not a problem, but the fear. And before you know it, you will see your neighbor launching it out. And you will know within yourself, I'm supposed to be doing what that person is doing. But when the idea was dropped in me, fear held me back. I wanted to begin to rehearse where you are in Christ Jesus. I wanted to begin to rehearse who you are in Christ Jesus. I wanted to begin to rehearse what you have in Christ Jesus. He said he has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. 
He said, he have given you the spirit of adoption. You are a child of God. Can you rehearse it this morning? Can you confront your fears with your new reality? Can you confront your fears with the new understanding you have? God does not want you to be limited by fear. God doesn't want you to be grieved by fear. He doesn't want you to be held back by fear. Let it not be that the reason you have not launched into the deep, the reason you have not scaled up to God's level and desire for your life is because of fear. Even to do God's work, even to serve God, even to live according to his will, even to be productive as far as God is concerned, sometimes fear may be a limit. Oh, your roommate is sick. You have been thinking, I should just lay my hands and pray. But you are afraid, what if I pray and nothing happens? It is that fear that has not made you see the raw manifestation of the power of God. Deal with your fears in his presence this morning. Rehearse who you are. Rehearse what you have. Rehearse where you are. Paul told Timothy, stir up. Stir up. Put yourself here. Put you in remembrance. When hands were laid on you, something came on your inside. When you received Jesus, something came into you. When you received the Holy Ghost, you received power. The grace of God is on your inside. The wisdom of God is with you. God is with you. God is by your side. You should not be afraid. Talk to the Lord this morning. Talk to the Lord this morning. Challenge your fears with your reality. With your reality in Christ Jesus. I will not be afraid what the enemy would do unto me. A thousand may fall on my side, ten thousand on my left. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid of the terror in the day, of the terror at night. I will not be afraid. Ten thousand upon ten thousand may gather against me. I will not be afraid. I might be in the midst of giants, but I will not be afraid because I know even though there are giants in the land, but I have been made by God to subdue them. Talk to the Lord this morning. Challenge your fears this morning. I will not be held back. I will not be held down. I will not be limited. I will not be handicapped. I will not be tormented again by fear. I will not be tormented again by fear. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for I know the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. His abiding presence is with me. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I'd like you to stretch for your hands. To the altar this morning. We read in the word of God that fear is sponsored by spirits, demonic spirit for that matter. I like I under God this morning. I want to take authority over those strange spirits because they are not of God. They must leave. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want your amen loud and clear. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I have delivered your word as you instructed. And any time your word is sent forth, it comes forth with power and authority. By the authority of your word, I come against every oppression of the spirit of fear in the life of your children. And I declare today, your activity comes to an end in the name of Jesus. Since you are not of God, I take authority over you by my authority in the name of Jesus. And I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I subdue you. I bind you. And I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Everyone here gripped by fear. Everyone here under the bondage of fear. Everyone that had been tormented by fear. You have always been afraid. 
A young lady came to me and said she had not be. She, I used to see her in, in, in night class, in Zion reading then. She will not sleep. She will not read. And the problem was that she was afraid of dying because all her siblings had died. So she felt if she closes her eyes to sleep, she would die. She was in torment of not being able to sleep because of fear of death. I declare, wherever the enemy has been tormenting you because of fear, receive victory in that area in the name of Jesus. Receive victory in the name of Jesus. It does not matter who it had happened to. It will not happen to you. A thousand may have fallen on your right. Ten thousand may have fallen on your left. But it will not come near you in the name of Jesus. Therefore, you are not afraid of evil. You are not afraid of evil. You are not afraid of the future. You are not afraid of the plans of the enemy. Because you are more than conqueror. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Can you declare I have victory over fear? In the name of Jesus. I am seated with Christ Jesus. In the heavenly places. Far above. Principalities. And powers. Can you say in the name of Jesus. Greater is he. That lives in me. Than he. That is in the world. In the name of Jesus. I am not afraid. Of what the enemy is doing around me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Put your hands together for Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Every grip of fear and yoke of fear is broken forever. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for this beautiful service. Thank you for what you have done. Glory, glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. This message is brought to you from Victory Chapel Church on Campus.